Hi YouTube, Engineer Boy 100 here. Have I got a treat for you guys today? The job that we're going to be doing today is on the 99 BMW M3 again, E36. But I had a little bit of shaking in my steering wheel under hard braking, and I'm not going to say from what speeds. <coughs> but there was a little bit of shaking as opposed to vibrating. Shaking as opposed to vibrating. So I'm going to go over that a little bit. How do you differentiate the Discs on the brakes are not warped, okay, so it wasn't coming from that. My belief is that it's coming from the front lower control arm bushings. So that's what we're going to be changing today. Take a look at it. So here they are. I got these, uh, this system here because it's very easy to install. All you have to do is take this little black inner piece, slide it onto the control arm, and then slide this purple piece after you have it in the, the housing on the actual, I guess it's like a little lollipop housing that goes uh, mounts to the frame. You just take this and you slide it onto here, just like that, it'll go on just like that once it's on the car, just slide it like this. You don't need a press or anything like that. So these are really good aftermarket urethanes. Um, I'm really uh, happy with what I've seen from other people, the, the reviews on these. Um, other videos that, that, that people have done for the install have been excellent. So, we're going to do that. So let's head down to the car. Okay, so before we head down to the car, here's a close-up of everything that comes in the box. You know, of course, you get a nice plastic box here. It's not going to rip and shipping because it is not cardboard. It is plastic. Um, you get some lube. You get your nice little instructions here. And you get some metal washers. They go on first, they go into the control arm first, then your inner black part goes on, just like so, onto the washer, and then you put your purple onto your black part like so. Okay, so now let's go down to the car for real and install them. Okay, we're out in the garage now, getting ready to do some work in the shop here, and this is the UltraPod 2. Why am I showing you the UltraPod 2 and a control arm bushing replacement movie video and that is because this is what will be holding the camera for you while I work. It is awesome, it is sturdy and I just wanted to show you what's going to be holding the camera for me once we, we go to work. Now let's go up underneath here and look at this bushing. I took my X brace off here as you can see and Took a look at these bushings and they are cracked all the way around. Both of them are the same. I don't know if you can see the cracks, but they are cracked all the way around. So I know it's time for them to be changed after so many years, almost two decades. So the mount bolts here, there's two of them, one here, one here, are both 17 millimeter. So I'll be using my little Ingersoll Rand cordless impact which is awesome. We're not gonna be doing this by hand. 20 volt, okay, this guy's 20 volts. I'll be using this to take off these bolts on both sides. And then I'll show you a couple of different ways to take the lollipop off. There's a few different ways to do it. I'll show you two, and then you can go from there. And there are other videos on YouTube if you wanna try yet another way. But I'll show you two ways to get the, uh, actually maybe I'll show you three. I'll throw you three different ways to get the lollipop off of the control arm itself. Stay tuned. Okay, I'll just let you watch at least one of the removals of the lollipops. Um, it's not too exciting. And yeah, this 20 volt is very powerful. Stronger than most air impact, so it, it has no problem doing uh, wheels, uh, mount bolts and everything. So I'm gonna get a, there we go, I'm gonna get a board or a, and put it through here to hold this down and then I'll start showing you the different ways uh, the lollipop should be removed. But look at that, it's just, I don't know if you can see the, how cracked it is, but it's just destroyed and that's why everything was shaking. So let's get into it. Okay, so method number one. One that I've seen a lot of people do is they get a saw and they go into this little opening here and they cut around the rubber part, which is a lot of work and then they uh, take the lollipop off and then they have either a puller or they have um, 
a chisel, the air chisel, which is I think is what I'm going to use today to actually get it off. The air chisel, and then they take the center part off. So, and another way is they just take a puller. The third way, they just take the puller and they just pull the whole thing off with something that goes into the center and pull the whole thing off. And I have some of those pullers, but today I'm just going to use the air chisel, put it here on the center part right here, and just, I'll let you watch too, so that if I fail, you can see that too, but I don't think I'm going to fail. Um, and you just brrr, take it off. Now, one thing you want to note with the lollipop is it is, and I'll show you again when we get it off if I can remember, but it does have like a counter board section on the back side of this mount flange that, that goes over these little alignment ports that surround the threaded uh, insert. You want to make sure that this is not backwards, okay? So make sure you get the right one on the right side. A good way to do that is do one at a time. And also make sure that this is not backwards because this is not just a through hole on the back side of this. It is counter board, which means that it's counter down to a flat surface, not counter sink, like a sink where things drain, where you have an angle on, on the surface. Okay, so now that I've told you three ways to take it off, I'm just going to show you uh, at least me trying to take it off with air chisel. All right, so now to assist with the removal, I'm going to put a little bit of croil. Okay, penetrant oil in there, right in the crack here, just to help when I start uh, going to town with the little air chisel here. And let's see if it works. Okay, so here we go. Air chisel away, and cue music. Odd angle because I'm trying to make sure you guys can see what I'm doing. It's a little awkward. Ooh. Let's see what kind of progress I can make by hand. Eh, hmm. Hmm. Yeah, it's coming a little bit. Interesting. Can't get it off with the tool, but I can get it off by hand? Really? That's hilarious. Now granted, I'm not bragging or anything. But I am stronger than the average person. So if you can't do it like this, don't think it's you're wimpy or anything like that. I am stronger than, than your average everyday person that's my same size. But uh, it's still a little tough. So, uh, but it is coming. So I'm kind of surprised that I've been able to move it at all. It's actually coming off by hand. It's very weird that it wouldn't come off with the air chisel. Maybe it's because it's rubbery. Not a hard surface on a hard surface, so it doesn't come off the air chisel because there's uh, there's flex in the in the contact points between the metal and the rubber. But there is still some rubber touching this inside part. So I'm not going to make you watch me struggle, but I think I'm going to take it off by hand. Okay, so finally I gave in and stop being lazy and I went and got my tool I have a little puller tool here and I have enough rubber left in the middle that I think you can just pull right off with the uh... so I'm just going to see another job and uh, it's a really handy tool I just feel like getting up and going and getting it but it turns out that lazy doesn't pay off so I went and got it, 
and it is pulling the, the little lollipop off quite nicely. Now, if you don't have a lot of rubber left in there, you can still use a tool like this or a similar puller to pull off the little centipedes. And then you just have to cut, you know, the little bit of rubber that's left, if any, to remove the lollipop and then just pull just the center portion off of the control. So either way, you can use a puller to get it. And then I'll show you how to clear out and remove the remainder of this uh, bushing from the lollipop housing itself. That's a separate, uh, a separate procedure. All right, that's enough. Oh, you want to actually see it come off? Okay, okay, okay. I get it. You want to actually see it come off? So here it comes. It's getting close to the end. And cue music. Ta-da! All right. So now we'll do the next, the next part. All right, guys. I gave up on the innovative ways of doing this. Um, I have the correct tools for doing it and I'm going to use them. So we're going to push this out with a press. I'll let you watch, but I'm not trying to find any more clever ways of doing this because I want to just get done. So I'm just going to press it out. Okay. Six ton press should do just fine. Hmm. It has no choice but to go out. All right, it'll be out. So let's go. Let's try this again. There we go. So that's the correct way. Now, the instructions say you want to rough up the surface of uh, the, this housing here, and you do not want to put any lubricant on this surface. No lubricant on the inside of this. You do want to put lubricant on the inside and the outside of the two separate pieces, which I will show you. Now, the other thing I said actually once is off is how this is counterboard here. So if you look at that, you want to make sure that this goes up against the car. So it goes over those little alignment inserts. Okay. So it looks like it's slightly counterboard and countersunk. Huh. So there you have it. All right, so let's get to roughing up, and installation is very, very easy compared to uh, removal. And here's the old, old bushing here. Let's see if you can see it. Oh, which way? There we go. The metal outside, and there's actually metal inside, and then rubber in between everything. So uh, there you have it. And we'll do the other side the same way. Now to install the new. So now I'm going to go ahead and rough up the end of the control arm. Got some 80 grit, some medium grit sandpaper here. Right here, nice and bright orangey colorish. And I'm just going to kind of clean off all of the, the rubber from the bushing, the old bushing. The new part. Okay, so we got both of the lollipops off, and I'm going to go ahead and rough them up a bit uh, with the sandpaper. I'll just roll this up so it's going to Put it inside and turn it, make it easier. Put them inside and rough them up. It's not too bad. Uh, it's not a whole lot of material left inside here. It's not bad at all. But the purpose of doing this is you want a good grip between this purple bushing and this housing. You want a really good, solid, um, non-slip connection because especially this one, it's offset. If you look at the hole, it's offset and you want to make sure that this offset is towards the, the little arm on the lollipop. And you want to make sure it stays that way, okay? And so to do that, you, you don't want it to slip or, or, or move. So you do not put any um, lubrication on this surface. You do not put any lubrication on this surface. 
The only place you want lubrication is between the black portion and the purple portion of the bushing itself so that the portion that is on the control arm and the portion that is on the lollipop can move without it much resistance and this offset um, consent, off non-concentric circle will uh, stay aligned with uh, the lollipop arm which is which is a, a component of your steering and your suspension um, your alignment basically so make sure you you, you lubricate the, per the correct portions follow the instructions and uh, there you go so this is roughed up the control arm is roughed up so now all we have to do is install the bushing into the lollipop. Now, when you install the bushing to the lollipop, you want to make sure that when this goes up, okay, the flange side is up towards, everything goes flange first. So you, the first thing you install is your washer onto the control arm. Then the black portion onto the control arm with no lubrication, slide it on, okay? Flange so that this goes up to the car and so does the flange portion goes up to the car. So when I install this, that the non consistent portion lines up perfectly with with the uh, the lollipop arm. Okay, so now we're gonna try it again. So we can get it right this time. And apply some even pressure so it's not so hard. It gets it, when it gets cocked too far sideways, that makes it more difficult. Let's go in. All right, and we got we're lined up, we're on the right side, and cue music. So once this is installed, then you can lubricate the inside of this and the outside of the black portion, and then the black portion goes directly onto. Okay, so here's the right side, and how do I know it's the right side? Because when I took it off, I wrote R on it. Now the right side was a little bit hard to push in, so why struggle? So what I would suggest, and what I decided to do on the left side, is use a little bit of soapy water. Just a little bit of water, like a cup of water, with a few drops of soap in it, so that that goes away. Unlike lubricant, you know, you don't, it's not a permanent lubricant, it's just to help you get it in. So, lining it up with the... Uh, I'm going to use soapy water on the left side to make it a little bit easier for me. And I would suggest you do the same thing because it is, it does take some effort to push these in dry like that. That was a little bit difficult. So, and then once you have it all the way in, see it, it pops in. Once it's all the way in, it's maybe not quite all the way um, in, you can smack it on the ground or with a hammer or something to get it to be completely, that flange to be completely flush with the housing. Okay, so it, or even you can just use the other lollipop. Just get them together and just pop it together, like you know, and it will pop that flange down flush, so that it's all the way down and both sides are popped in. And now you're ready to lubricate and install the uh, black part onto the controller. Now when you do that, don't forget to put your washers on first, and when you put the black portion on, put it. Flange side first, okay? Flange side first. Okay, let's get under the car. Well, before we get under the car, I decided to uh, do my lubricating up here <laughs> because it's gonna be easier to lube here than on the ground under the car, right? So you might wanna do the same thing. So this part here, the outside goes in here so you want to lube this up a little bit. It doesn't take a lot, just a nice little film of coating. And then around the outside here and, and also down into this little shaft part, cylinder part here where the shaft goes. Get some lube on that. That's going to make your life easier when you're pushing this onto that after this is installed on the controller. So I'm going to do all my lubricating up here. Then I'm going to go down and install these little black portions first, flange first, and then, and that of course is after I put the washer on. That's first first. These are second first. And then we'll install these arms. 
bolt them back on and then put the tires back on and see if we have any more shaking. Now, I was gonna talk about vibration versus shaking. If you have vibration due to warped um, disc brakes or something like that, it's gonna vibrate all the time. Whenever you test the brake, it's gonna vibrate at whatever frequency you're driving, however fast you're driving, it'll vibrate at a different frequency, but it will vibrate all the time. Now, a shake, on the other hand, which is what I experienced, it does not happen all the time. It happens at certain speeds and at certain braking pressures. Hardness of braking, and then I'll get a shake. And the other slight difference between a vibrate and a shake is the actual frequency, how fast it goes. And it's hard to describe, unless you're experiencing, you know what you're feeling, but I'll attempt. When you have a shake, it's more of a whoop, 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 whoop type of a shaking feel, right? Because the frequency of the shaking of the bushing is going to be slightly slower or a lower frequency than the frequency of a spinning disc that a caliper is squeezing. So when you squeeze a caliper, say at 60 miles an hour, it's going to be more of a type of a fast vibrating type of sensation. Whereas with a bushing, it'll be more of a whoop, 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 shaking. I don't know how to make it any clearer than that. But um, that's my take on it. If somebody else knows how to describe it better, please help me out. So now for real, it's time to go under the car and install these little lollipop front lower control arm. All right, we're under the car again. So let's go ahead and make sure remember, we remember to put the washer on first, like so. Here's our washer, and that goes on like so. Then we have to put the black portion on, flange first, like so. And that was not hard at all. And then flange first, uh, lollipop with the countersunk portion on. We put this on. This is the, what did I do? Did I do it backwards after all? I did it backwards, that's freaking hilarious. So now, <laughs> It's still backwards. All right, so I have to take this thing off, flip it around. After all that, I still put it on back. It's funny. You the flat side on this side, not on the side with the council, but on the other side. Holy smoke. Now, now I just ruined my reputation. Look at that. Yep. All right, so back to the match. Okay, so once the um, switching is installed, you'll have the side of the lollipop arm with the countersink and the side of the uh, lollipop arm without the countersink. The side without the countersink is the side that you want to have the flange on your housing here, okay? You want the, the flange side on the side where there is not a countersink. Okay, this is the side without the flange, this is the side with the counter seat. Because it's a pain to get these out um, if you get them in wrong, which you'll find out when you go to install it. Okay, let's get into it. Okay, so you want to put the lollipop on with the flange side towards the control arm, like so, flange, and then you're going to have your counter sinks, your counter bores um, facing the vehicle here. Okay, so the flange part is going to be on the side where the counter sinks are not. Okay, the flange portion goes on the side where the counter sinks are not. So then you just slide it on because it's lubricated. It's going to go on the easiest of all of the insertions, nice and smooth. And then you just have to wiggle your wheel around a little bit and line up these up. Uh, yeah, well, it's easier than I thought. And just get your screws in and tighten them down. And that's it. And then I'll put my X brakes back on. And I will put uh, the wheels back on. And I should have no more shaking when braking from speeds that I will not mention. 
Okay, so here's a, a shot from the other side so you can see what it actually looks like installed. And all we have to do now is torque down those two mount bolts and replace the X-rays. Okay, so we're all buttoned up. X-frame, X X-brace is reinstalled. And I just wanted to go ahead and give one more final look at both of them installed, as much for you as for me as for you. And there's the left side, all tightened up. And they really look great. I love the way they look. I'm really hoping I don't have any more shaking. I'm hoping that this uh, clears it up. And uh, other than that, it was a fairly easy install. And I thank you once again for watching. Have a nice day.